Let's get into the Wednesday Night War, which was one was on Wednesday, one was on Thursday. NXT taking on AEW Dynamite. Uh, so actually, both shows delivered this week. I thought they were both good shows. Uh, would you agree? All right, we'll get into it. <laughs> okay, okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so NXT on Wednesday, Karrion Cross had to relinquish the championship, so that was one of the highlights on that they show. They knew that. The, they knew that the night of. Yeah, so you know that 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 that, that pissed me off because Keith Lee's up there now wearing skirts and shit. But uh, then. Uh, for AEW Dynamite, we had, you know, a kind of like a contract signing, and then we had the tag team gauntlet match, and, you know, so we had a lot of things going on with, with there also. So, let's just get right up on into this, and then we start off, then we get, you know, a, a recap of TakeOver 30, and then Karen Cross had to separate his shoulder. A lot of people were blaming it because he was trying to suplex Keith Lee on the top rope, which it happened before then. People were saying there was a spirit bomb ahead before that. I think it's when Keith Lee tried to, like, ch uh, you know, pounce him. Well, Keith Lee is, like, 340 pounds. You try to pick him up. It's not going to be on purpose. It's just, I mean. Yeah. Um. So he comes out, and then he said his shoulder is severely injured, and his right arm is already in a sling. And the first thing I thought of was Finn Balor with a Universal Championship. Yep. They had to relinquish that. That, yeah, that, that was just not good. And then... Why, uh, could, why couldn't they just, like, uh, redo it or something? Yeah. Not redo it, but, like, if they if you know who's injured, call it, like, the, like, call it at the last second or something like that. I mean, I, well, they, they probably wouldn't care across the lose, so... Yeah, yeah. Right. and I'm just saying they probably didn't want to lose, but... Uh, Scarlett gets the mic, and let's everybody know that we told everybody... That he was going to become champion. Everybody was going to suffer. And he kept his word to beat Keith Lee. And then, uh, but when you're in war, you got to expect casualties. So his, his, uh, his shoulder separated, severe pain. And people be like, well, just, just, everybody can't just Mel Gibson their shoulder back in place. You know what I'm saying? You got to take surgery and do that. that. That's the movies. You know, every, you, you, you've seen Lethal, Lethal Weapon, right? Prime time. Yeah. So, you know, every time in the movie that the open theme was that, you know, Riggs his shoulder would get dislocated, and then he got to get like ram it across, like you know, uh, a door there to pop it back in the socket. Oh no! Like if that, if that shoulder was dislocated, Trish Stratus had to leave, Finn Balor had to leave, Karen Cross leaving. He like we gonna do this the right way, and had them put the shoulder back in place for you. So, he uh, is relinquishing his championship. And uh, you know, you know, uh, he says, "God help the obstacles that will be in my path." Scarlett flips over the hourglass, and he relinquishes the championship, walks away, and leaving the belt in the hourglass, which actually looks like a pretty cool visual. So, uh, we get to Way Barrett is back on commentary. I enjoyed Way Barrett on commentary. Yeah, because he does a. Uh he does it for NWA. Yeah, NWA Power. For what culture? Is he is he done with um wrestling? No, he don't. No, he don't wrestle. Anymore. So he's done with wrestling, like physical wrestling. I don't know for sure. But I know, like after he left, he hasn't wrestled since he left. Okay. Well, yeah. So, but he 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 was a uh, really good on commentary, and now we get ready for our first matchup of the night. Bree Zongo and Imper of uh, versus Imperium for the NXT Tag Team Championships. So here's the thing: when I was like, I forgot Bree Zongo won a number one contender spot for this. I was actually doing a little bit of other stuff because I was like, there was no way Bree Zongo's winning these tag team championships, not off of uh, Imperium. Man, was I wrong and glad I caught them last little bit minutes of the matchup when uh you know egg that. Eigner Eigner goes for the superplex on Fandango, but he escapes and goes. A breeze comes out, and then he starts hitting the air raid crash. Starts you know going across the ropes and start hitting the the uh the, the, the supermodel kicks and stuff like that. And then uh, but they they take Tyler Breeze up for the European bomb, but Breeze he, he ex, ex, uh, hits the escapes and hits both of them with supermodel kicks or super kicks, what they call them now. But I'm like it's a supermodel kick. And uh, Fandango 
from the top row gives his diving leg drop on both members of Imperium. One, two, three. Breezango is your new tag team champions. Great. He, he said you don't know about that. <laughs> no, because like, they ain't even let them do nothing. They ain't even give them anything. The only thing they had was a match when Pat McAfee was there to fight Africa. And that was it. Who, Breezango? No, the, the Imperium. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I really think They literally that... haven't even been on the show other than that. I, I, I think because if Breeze Hong was going to win them, I think they're transitional champions to give it to uh, the God of Phantasma. Oh, oh. I, I, I truly believe because I think they're trying to have a heel stable on NXT that that's not just Undisputed Era, and he's already the cruiserweight. So you can. Uh, they and need then, to open up flights or something. Brand Walter, man. Cause, uh, I mean, you uh, know, Walter's probably stuck in his country, so. But yeah, I think they're just trying to put the belts on Legato del Fantasma. So that's what that's what two things happened. Backstage, Dave Priest interview, you know, about winning the North American Championship, and then all of a sudden Timothy Thatcher appears and uh, challenges Priest for the title because he lost. I'm like, why does Timothy Thatcher get the chance to challenge for the North American Championship? I thought somebody in the match would be able to challenge, but I guess not. Yeah, no. Uh, so there is talk to figure out how they they're going to crown a new uh, NXT champion. Triple H is talking with Michaels and uh, Atron. I don't know that was. I don't know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> not Shawn Michaels. It, it was a non-seller, you know. Especially with Shawn Michaels being one of the best sellers in the business, but just not that night. I told you that's not Shawn Michaels. That's an imposter. I'm telling you. You, you know you're right. I must not believe in you now. Shawn Michaels does not sell like that. This man would have died. Uh-huh. Then we get Jake Atlas coming out to take on the returning Tommaso Champa. Champa comes down with a mask, got a new look coming out, and he comes out, and let's just say this. Beast the fuck out of Jake Atlas. Yep. Calls it day. So yeah, he's a, he's back to being a heel. And then uh <laughs> he wins he wins the matchup. And he attacks uh Atlas after the match, throws him into the plexiglass, the steel steps and all that kind of stuff like that. And then he, he sits on the apron, does that blink stare, stuff like that as the paramedics come out, put him on a stretcher. He's not done yet. Let's hit the uh what he calls the Widow's Bell DDT. Uh, uh hanging from the top of the stretcher and then he, he puts I was like, okay, so uh it's pretty dope. But then from uh they go to commercial, they come back. Ron Serie is talking to Timothy Thatcher and he's like he deserves to uh a chance at the, at the North Record Championship because he didn't lose and he's kinda hot right now. Timothy Thatcher, you lost, bro. You actually lost. So uh, he slaps. Uh, well, then I think uh, Austin Theory comes up. I yeah, forgot where he like comes. Yeah, so I, so Austin Theory's back in uh, NXT, and then uh, you know he appreciates his, his thing, and then uh, uh, he slap uh, re slaps him, and then walks away. Me and you got a match coming up against Shazi Blackheart. And then uh, Robert Stone is out there, you know, uh, saying his client would not compete tonight. And Shazi shows up behind him and runs him over with the tank. And she becomes me and opponent. That's how it happens. Uh, so it was, a, it was a pretty decent matchup. But she just sent Tom off the top rope and pins me in for the three count. Shazi Blackheart wins. And then um, it's pretty much. Where, where, where it goes, and at the I mean, uh, yeah, Charles needs more opportunity. She, she needs more. She needs to get some some better. Yeah, uh, where we go? Uh, it's, well, let, let's say everybody know that it's going to be a bit of one of the biggest matches in NXT history, and I'm glad that they are the ones that tries different matches out. It's going to be a fatal four-way matchup with all previous NXT champions. It's going to be Tommaso Ciampa, 
taking on Johnny Gargano, taking on Finn Balor, taking on Adam Cole in a fatal four-way match. Not just any fatal four-way match, a 60-minute Iron Man match. That's dope. I think that's dope, no, but I think we all know how this going to end. Chopper? They all, they all going to get one. It's going to be sudden death. That's fine with me. That's fine with me. It may, it, it, you know what I'm saying? That is fine with me. <clears throat> so, like, 60-minute Fatal 4-Way Iron Man match, that is what you call building a match on 2K. You know, like... Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to do an Iron Man match in Fatal 4-Way style. I'm like that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm dope. I'm cool with that. Cruiserweight champion uh, Santos Escobar takes on Swerve, which I thought was going to be a takeover, so uh, it really isn't. Uh, good match about these two. I, you know, I, I, I thought it was a really good match. I was like, hopefully, you know, we can see more out of these two. And then um, Escobar hits Sky with the hit button. Knock him out. Uh, I forgot, you know, because I didn't really truly see all of the matches like I wanted to. But uh, <clears throat> I don't think he won with the Phantom Driver this time. I don't, I don't know. I uh, really don't know. I, I kind of mm. skipped this match because I already know who's going to win. Kyle O'Reilly taking on Drake Maverick because, really? Uh, hey, remember when they when they saved Drake Drake Navit out of every single talent on the whole roster? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. This is what happened to him. So don't get too mad, Leo Rush. Uh, <laughs> Kyle O'Reilly puts him in that knee lock, has Maverick uh, uh, tap out, and then but it's not done yet because there's a brawl. Killian Dane comes down to the ring, and they start they see start fighting the. Uh, Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish and chasing them and stuff like that. So, uh, that's what happens there. When we get a women's championship matchup, uh, Io Shirai and, well, no, the women's champion, Io Shirai and Rhea Ripley, a tag team against Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez in a tag team matchup. And, um, this matchup, like I said, I didn't get the chance to see too much disrespect. I didn't know why this was the main event. Because, like, and, um, because it got Rhea Ripley, Io Shirai. I mean, because it got Rhea Ripley. And, well, I mean, Io Shirai is, is, you know, don't sleep on Io, neither. <laughs> uh, Dakota Kai is trash referee as uh, Rhea tags in, but the ref doesn't see it. You know, that that that, that whole shebang bang. And Io Salil, Mercedes Martinez comes out of nowhere and takes Rhea off the apron. Gazala hits Io with a power slam. Uh, Rip, Rip, after that, they brought a little bit Ripley makes it back into the corner to save uh, Io from the uh, Dakota Kai uh, Haluva kick or the face wash. And uh, uh, Ripley tags, uh, tags in, so it's Gonzalez. But she's not re- re- recovered from the attack. Gonzalez hits that one arm uh, after the big boot, hits the one arm powerbomb and pins Ripley. So Ripley has lost like twice in a month. Mm-hmm. Yep. The fuck is going on NXT? Don't don't do that to my girl Rhea Ripley. Do not do that to my girl Rhea Ripley. How the hell are y'all do- like? Come on now, like, I, cause you you know she should be, she be the next contender for the championship or something like that. Cause definitely it's Dakota Kai. Uh, They're probably waiting for fans. Oh, to get probably so if she can get a championship back. Mm-hmm. Cause she never should have lost that joint in the first place. They probably waiting on fans to build her back up. I mean, but in order to do it, you got to build her back up now. Well, they don't know how long it's going to take, so. <laughs> for, for physical people. So they don't know. I'm like, I, and, and me personally, I'm just like, I'm sick, I'm sick and tired of Rhea Ripley, you know, selling for uh, Raquel Gonzalez. I mean, come on now. It's Rhea Ripley here. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah, oh man, it just, it just bothered me. But. Going on to NXT, um, excuse me, go, uh, we just did NXT, I'm sorry. Going on to AEW Dynamite. So, uh, Dynamite is on Thursday, uh, was on Thursday, and we actually got some fans in the building. Uh And you can actually tell 
Now, once again, is it all supposed to be as safe? No, I wouldn't be doing it just yet. But I don't, I don't condemn anybody who does want to do it because my man Prime Time was supposed to be going, but uh, some things came up. But he was excited to go. Yeah, but hopefully, if everything all right, uh, Saturday would be my be my time. So they supposed to come? They supposed to come back on Saturday? Yes, uh, pay per view. Oh, you, you think you think about going to All Out? You said what? You actually thinking about going to All Out? No, they had a sale on on uh, whatever day, Friday, whatever. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, if anything go good, that should be my time. All right, well, you, you, like I said, definitely take pictures and let me know how that, how the experience is, because I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see it. Uh, Love Champion and Demo God Chris Jericho is on the commentary, and of course we're gonna start off with the tag team gauntlet match. The winner. Winning... Whoa, whoa, whoa! What? Oh, it's been like six months since the crowd sung in Judas. Okay. You're right. I forget how cool that was. <laughs> yes, uh, the crowd did sing. That's yeah. how I knew. The crowd was there because it's been so, so long since I heard so them long sing long. Judas. Uh, it's been so long. I, I, I've i missed it. I, and I can't wait to get the choir back out. Judas! I can't wait. So, they uh, Chris Jericho shows that he's still over. And that uh, it, it's going to be a way to kick it off with uh, the tag team gauntlet match. And the winning team earns a tag team title match player. Uh, against Hangman Page and Kenny Omega at All Out all, this Saturday. So this is the so it's not like WWE where you have like eight teams and you know like seven of them are jobbers and you already know what team going to win. So this one is well, I mean I can make the argument, but I knew who was going. I knew who was going to win first place. So by ranking number four ranking is Natural Nightmares. Number three, the Young Bucks. Number two, the Best Friends. Don't know how, you know. Best friends got over Young Bucks, but then number one is FTR. So that is going to be the order that that it is. So um, the Natural Nightmares are going one, going up against the Young Bucks first, correct? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so they're, they're, they're going they're going up on, or they're going up on the Young Bucks, and then uh, so after uh the. The, uh, the Young Bucks beat the Natural Nightmares, so then they're going up against the best friends. Now, this is the part I, everybody was talking about that I missed with the part with Adam Page. Adam Page screws over the Young Bucks. Mm-hmm. Because everybody was wondering, like, well, he doesn't want to face them at uh, All Out, which I thought would be dope, but I don't think they want to, you know, do that match again right now. So, uh,. They, uh, the, the best friends move on because they get a system hangman page and uh, they beat the Bucks by, by pinfall. And then we get FTR coming out with, t- with Tully and they, um, are in there and they go against the best friends. They did what a reasonable friends. team would do. Say what? They did what a reasonable team would do. Usually they'll like sit there and they'll pummel them and they say, oh yeah, we got this one. And I said, nah, I'm coming out there, get the pen real quick and go up by my business. Yeah, that's what it was. And then uh, they, uh, Jericho says he really impressed with uh, FTR. And uh, they beat the best friends. And they are the ones that going to go on against Kenny Omega and Adam Page this Saturday. Uh-huh. And all out. That should be a dope match, too. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, might be. We'll see. Uh-huh. Uh, then we just go into this black and white footage of Darby Allen skateboarding into this rural area and he climbing this ra- it's a railroad bridge so it's one of those short bridges for little trains to go by stuff like that wherever he's from and he says I'm not scared of you Ricky Starks and jumps off the top of this bridge into the water and I'm like Darby I believe you when you say you are not scared but those people, are, that's called adrenaline drunkies. Junkies. They want that uh, adrenaline and stuff like that. Uh, they be watching Jeff Hardy tapes. Exactly. Well, Jeff Hardy with a swan time. 
laying around his back in that water, but the Darby just went straight down. I'm like, no, thank you. I'm good. I can't Smart do it. Smart thing, they're going to cough him. Oh, my God. Stop it. Uh, the Murder Hawk monster Lance Archer is taking on Sean Mula. And I have Sean to say, Malula. Sean Malula, excuse me. This match went on too long. You don't remember Sean Malula? Your favorite? <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> no, no. Okay, refresh, refresh my memory. He, he was in NXT. He was uh, the, the Samoan, the cousins of uh, Roman and them. Oh, the Usos' cousins. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. So, the damn. CWC. Oh, yeah, well, he, he kind of toned up a little bit. And uh, this match lasted too long. Nah, nah. It, you don't think it lasted too long? No, I'm saying it didn't last that long. No, no, no. It lasted long. too long. I mean, he should have got rid of this guy in a minute. He is taking three minutes to. Is he already doing all that taunting and shit? And I'm yeah, like, that's his, that's his style, though. Oh my he god! He literally takes his time, beats you up, taunts, beats you up, taunts, and then pins you, and then lifts you up off the mat. Yeah, and then beats you up some more. So. Well, after the match that he beats him, Jake Roberts enters the ring and says, you know, that they're talking about the King of Battle Royale at All Out and that Archer better eliminate all the other 20 men in the match. But, and, they, and everybody dies. But, Taz, Ricky Starks, and the Machine, you know, Brian Cage comes out and... Uh, Jake, Jake Roberts says, here comes the Flintstones. <laughs> I didn't understand it. I don't know. Okay. Well, you know, Taz be short. He built like a Flintstone character. But why didn't he say? Why didn't he say the Looney Tunes? That would make more sense. You yeah, know, Taz. And, I mean, I don't know. I guess you look at it that way. Looney Tunes is dead anyway. Do you have HBO Max? Either one of them is. What are you? <laughs> he literally had to explain. There's Barney and Fred and uh and and uh and he can't think of another man. <laughs> Uh, he, really could. he really could. Why you start a reference if you don't even know? No. Uh, he said, well, look, Team Taz will be victorious at the Casino Battle Royal, not Lance Archer. Okay. Taz point to Cage said, look, one of these men will win at All Out. Darby Allen skateboards to the ring. Skateboarding really dope, too. Like, he, he, he get ready for that Tony Hawk sports get to one and two. And comes out there and then blasts Ricky Starks out his shoes. You hear me? And like, all right, I, I, I'm gonna chin check you for you. You doing that thing for, for me at the top rope, but I knocked the man out of his shoes. So he starts beating. Distracting too. It, you said what? Ricky Stones was distracting because you got like one side you got a uh, Archer, one other side you got Brian Cage, uh-huh. and then you got Roberts and Taz on on the on the side. And he just in the middle, like with his outfit, just looking like. Uh, mm-hmm. I I I do believe that the, a match between Brian Cage and Lance Archer would be dope. I think it's, it's not coming now, but I can see they build it up to it. No, they, they got built to it and make these two look dominant and yeah. make it fight the FTR championship, uh, uh, FTW championship. So, because that should be a thing. Uh, We get a video package and let anybody know that we're going to have Thunder Rosa taking on Sheeta mm-hmm. at All Out. Mm-hmm. So, that should be good. And then it's time for a contract signing. That should be, that should be good. Like, it, amazing. It, it really should be. I, 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 if it's I, not match of the night, I will, well, not, or, or it won't be in AEW. So if it's not, like, top three match of the night, it should be. I'm about to say, it's not going to be the match of the night over the Mimosa Mayhem match. <laughs> but we'll get to it. Um, Why are you playing? It's like still the show. <laughs> Uh, the aid, uh, MJF and Moxie's out there for the contract signing. MJF's out there in a neck brace, and he comes with the belt. And social distance from fans in attendance. Uh, you know, the, the, the pop of Mox was still like even with the social distancing, you could still hear people, and I like that. Mm-hmm. I really did uh like that. Yeah, people don't gotta listen to Billy Gunn every week now. Yeah, Toy Shivani because I ha- I haven't got to Walmart yet to buy my magazine. But he said it was revealed that John Moxley was number one on the this year's PWI 500 list. Mm-hmm. That's good. So I'm glad that they actually bring that to the wrestling. And he said, "Uh, oh well, yeah, they always outside companies always bring that up though." Yeah, except WWE. They don't do it because they, they when they people win, like the number two will be like somebody from a different company, and they don't want to mention it or something. Uh huh. 
I know the WCW they used to they used to have like a full award show for it. Yeah. Like tag team of the year one time, the Nasty Boys won, and the Sting won, and they made like a big like thing for it. Yeah. Or used to. Well, hopefully, I'll probably be going to my local Walmart this weekend, and they usually have the magazine, so I'm going to probably check it out to see it, you know, pick it up there. Uh, Basically, uh, MJF is calling him out. They say, I thought you was a one-trick pony. She said, I was wrong about you. She said, you're good. You're real good. It's why people love you, because you're a badass. But all out, we're not, go- we're not going to be in no dark alley. We're going to be in the wrestling ring, and I'll take you apart systematically and consistently. And then, so, and then, he, and then uh, and you don't got your uh, pretty platinum around my waist. And you don't have the paradigm shift. And then Moxie says, do I need the paradigm shift to beat you? <laughs> no. He said, you're forcing me to get creative. You're forcing me to think of all the ways I can hurt you without the paradigm shift. And that's what makes this so interesting. I'm going to go ahead and sign you a little contract. But remember, two things. Nothing you say matters. <laughs> and nothing I sign matters. On September 5th, you're a dead man. And he signed a contract, and then, uh, you know. Uh, the, was this the one where he had the other promo, too? Who, Moxley? Like, uh, yeah, he was like, uh, you're going to be the champion someday. Sure, I'll let you have it. Uh, you might be the champion next week, you know, because the way the arm wrestle, I feel like I don't have no more. Uh, was that this week or was that last no, week? That was last week. That was last week. Okay, okay, okay. That was last week. And then uh, Moxie smirked at the, at the end. And said, you didn't read the contract, did you? I added a page. Moxie pointed out to MJF's lawyer. Next week, we're going to have a little tune-up match. It's going to be me versus you. And if you don't show up, Bonehead doesn't get his title match at All Out. And next week, the paradigm shift is legal. So, that should be kind of dope. Uh, Santana Ortiz... Tell best friends it's time to pay their dues. Gives a fuck. Uh, the the Lucha Bros and the Butcher and the Blade taking on uh Joy Janela and Sunny Kiss, Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Grayson. Who is Griff? Nah, that's, that's <laughs> they don't they don't say that no more. Oh, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't say that no more. Who's Griff Grayson? Nah, he don't, he don't, nah, he don't be on the show no more. Oh, okay. Well. The match, you know, you know, you can't have an AEW Dynamite match without uh, a little bit of a tag, you know, eight man tag team match player. Ten man, twenty uh, man, <laughs> tag team match. Uh, Brian Pillman Jr. looks good. He reminds me a lot of Flying Brian in the early WCW days because I I used to enjoy, I used to watch Flying Brian Pillman go up against um, uh, God, what's his name? The one who's going in the Hall of Fame this year, or supposedly before you know COVID happened. Thunder Liger. Yeah, yes, you shouldn't, you shouldn't Thunder Liger, and they they had they had a great couple good good matches in nine like ninety one, that was ninety two. Yeah, had a lot of good matches, like a lot of people. Yeah, but that didn't do anything for Brian Pillman Jr. as he um uh Janelle takes a uh gives Ray Finks a Death Valley driver on the apron, and uh, he. He gets out, uh, Pillman Jr. gets outnumbered, and then uh, they hit the double foot stop combo, the pin for the finisher. And after the match, you know, Eddie Kingston from New York, he come up and uh, all his men, he said, one of these men is running the casino battle royal at All Out. All right? And uh, I, I doubt d- it, but all right. Say what? I doubt it, but all right. Yeah, I know. I was say, I mean, if, 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 if it was a talking promo game, then yeah, he got it. Uh, Brody Lee and the Dark Order had to uh, <laughs> come out to, to, to celebrate their win, but and it is they use the casket meme. Yeah, oh my God, it is Cody Rose's funeral. If anybody read the comic book, the Death Death of Superman, I they came out with the casket on their shoulders, dancing with the casket. Like they, that, 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 yeah, it, it was funny. They put the American Nightmare logo on, draped over the casket, and. God, I can't believe I'm saying this. The Dark Order had a good segment. Yeah. I can't so, believe. See, their their segment on BTE building up to this is so like 
out like if you see them on BT and then you see them on shows like two different comparisons, now they start to like integrate the two. Mm-hmm. Like for example, they used this on the show last week on Hangman's um on his on his like when his tears when his name pop up. Mm-hmm. It said I need a lawnmower to cut my yard. <laughs> and then on on BTE, it's like a segment. The whole dark order got like a million dollars or something each. And they was like, what are you going to do with your money? And then they all do like stupid stuff with their money. Mm-hmm. And Brody Lee was like, you know what? I bought six lawnmowers. I don't have no yard whatsoever, but you know, I don't like Hangman. So I bought six lawnmowers. Because mm. <laughs> they don't like Hangman. Yeah, so then on this yeah. show, they, they showed all the lawnmowers because they don't like Hangman. And he needs lawnmowers. So I, 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 I need I need to really start watching B and E Elite. I really do. I, I don't know. Mean, see the, the the Dark Order is starting to take over. Like I think if you watch the Dark Order segments, you'll probably like you play. Oh, these guys are actually pretty entertaining. I'm sorry, man. You know, I, I gotta go with my. I'm not letting Christopher Dick because the Dark Order sucks. But they are. He the, actually. Uh, you know what? He was actually uh had a segment with Dark Order on BT this week. You know, but uh, I'll talk about that later. Oh God! All right. Well, uh, after the you know, uh, Dustin Rose and QT Marshall split to the ring, attempt to take out their anger on Dark Order. You know, saying for what happened, and then Scorpio Sky runs to there, and uh, but because he was just random with throwing out there. <laughs> I was like, why? <laughs> okay, and helping him uh, as Dark Order head for higher ground. So that's what that eight man tag team match player. Is going to be. I got they do tag team at eight mans all the damn time. Hey man was at the bar when the young bus confronted him and said he was he was scared to face him. And you're out the elite. So hangman Page has been kicked out the elite. So I mean, you kind of we've kind of seen that coming anyway, though. Uh, I seen I seen him and Kenny get both being out when they kicked out of just leaving. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, handicap matchup. Big Swole taking on. Uh, her Dr. Brent Baker DMD. Uh, P- P- no, well, she she's Dr. Dr. Brent Baker's out there, but Penelope mm-hmm. Ford and Reba because Rebel is just, first right. of all, whoever made that attire needs to raise. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I guess the black, the black and silver goes well together. It does. So Penelope, you know, Brent Baker asked Penelope Ford for the favor last week. So uh, the the matchup it don't, don't even it's not even taking that long. Uh, uh, was it Reba takes one of Britt Baker's crutches, tries to hit Swole, but she hits Penelope Ford instead, and then uh, Swole pins. That is so messed up. It is. But Swole pins Penelope Ford as Big Swole wins and gets her. Will have her matchup with Doctor Britt Baker, DMD, at all out. So. I thought they were gonna do a tag team match because I don't know if she'd be ready yet, but it looks like they think. Nah, that... she, nah, she, she completely ready. She just uh, like she still got the face thing on. She still got the crutches because her character is. Yeah. Is, is, no, but, no, but remember last time we was talking, like we didn't know if she's gonna be one hundred percent ready yet. No, I'm saying like she's actually one hundred percent now, but mm-hmm. she's playing it up as if she's not. She's doing like a Bret Hart thing. Gotcha. When he was fighting Vince and he had the uh, the, the thing on, and oh yeah, just signed the contract. He took it off. That should be a that should be a dope match. Uh, so we have the first ever tables match in AEW history. Was and, it just called a tables match? Or was it like table Escamorte or something? Uh, <laughs> no, it was just tables match, and it's Matt Hardy taking on Sammy Guevara. So this match is like a brutal tables match of stuff that I like, and uh, the whole theme of the match is Matt Hardy is trying to open up. Sammy Guevara, the same way he got opened up, and they they are busted. Sammy got a gash on his head, uh, that too. Uh, Matt Hardy uh, gives uh, Sammy Guevara a side effect on the ring apron, puts him on the table, jumps off the apron with an elbow, but misses. But like like their rules is you gotta be, you gotta uh, offensively put your person through the table to win the matchup. Um. Sammy gets back in the ring with a metal chair, but Matt counters and does the, the twist of fate with the head inside the chair like he did Jeff Hardy. That looked like it all. Man. Always, always good move. Yeah, it all like it sucked for, for, for Sammy Guevara. 
Uh, he pulls the table underneath the ring that had the words delete written on it, spray painted across it. He sets it up, and then, but uh, Matt Hardy tries to go to the top rope, but you know, Matt Hardy got no knees. So he gets sp spaghetti laid, and then he gets super plucked. I don't know why he don't never just go to the second rope like he used to. <laughs> Matt, Matt be getting cocky. Then Sammy gives him a suplex through the table, and uh, Matt Hardy goes through the table. Sammy Guevara wins. So, as Sammy Guevara is on the, uh, sitting on the apron celebrating, you just see, like, in the background, this guy running across the back. Like, what was that? And it's Orange Cassidy, and he's just whooping Jericho's ass, and they are fighting. And then, uh, and, and literally, he's like, my God, where the hell he come from? That's what Jerry Ross said. And I'm like, I'm saying the same shit. Because I watch Sammy Guevara, I see this, 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 like, this white beam running across. Like, if you, like, yeah, look at your peripheral vision. And then uh, he he's dropping Jericho, and it, it, that's how we end off the show. So that was the Wednesday Night War Prime. Tell me, in your opinion, who won for the week? I first, I think uh, AEW won. I don't yeah. know. I just felt like they just did a lot of stuff. I really liked. I, and they, oh, no, no, you, no, no, you got to go ahead. Now, as I was gonna say, NXT they did stuff they didn't like. If they would have had the fatal four way, then they would have won. But they didn't. They just announced it. You know, they kind of had the tag team match I wanted to went into. Yeah. Both of them. So, uh, yeah. I, 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 I think I think uh, they had um, NXT probably had the better match quality, but AEW had the better storyline. So I'm gonna go with AEW one one. Yeah, they had a better story progression. Yeah, they had better progression, but NXT had the better matches that night. So, but you guys can always post that in the comments down below which guy, which one you thought won between AEW and NXT.